my channel it's Pauline Michelle if this is your first time clicking in to watch a video if not then welcome back to my channel I just want to thank all of you that are watching this travel nurse series that I'm putting out for you I feel like this series is very informative it's going to help a lot of people that are interested in travel nursing but may have some questions that have not been answered so if you're one of those persons I would like you to stay tuned and continue to watch my series also, you can comment down below any questions that you may have about travel nursing or nursing in general. It may spark some sort of discussion or dialogue in the comment section that I am so eagerly waiting for. So I thank you guys all for clicking in to watch this video. Make sure that you like this video. Also subscribe to my channel for more videos. So this video is a story time and it's about the time when I went on travel contract to Kearney North Kearney, Nebraska for a travel nurse contract. This was not a COVID contract. This was just a crisis contract. So there are a few different types of contracts, um, but a crisis contract means that they are, the hospital is in crisis. They are completely short staffed and they are in need of assistance ASAP. So those are your contracts that are going to have very high rates because they really need you and they need you to come immediately. So why Kearney? You know, guys, I'm on the East Coast and Kearney is over a thousand miles from where I was living. Um, it was not my first choice. Florida was another option for me, but I got back to my recruiter too late and Kearney was the only thing that was like the highest paying job. It was paying like $5,000 a week. And I was <clears throat> excited about that money, but I was a little hesitant because of the location. I knew that I was going to have to go by myself and I knew that it was so far away. So if something happened to me, I was going to be by myself. Um, I didn't have anyone there to help me and it was scary. It was scary. But a few things that I liked about the hospital was I, the computer system. I was a super user, so I knew that I would not have that barrier. Um, it was a floor, my normal specialty cardiac PCU. So I was very familiar with the floor. Um, they didn't do drips on this floor. So I knew that it was going to be a less invasive floor, which made me feel like it was not going to be as much work as some other cardiac PCU floors. So I was like, okay, the only thing I didn't like about the contract is that I would get paid bi-weekly and I hate getting paid bi-weekly. And then I would have to work 48 hours, which means I would have to work four shifts instead of three. So that's how they got me with the $5,000. Before I went to this place and agreed to this contract, I kind of went online and looked it up and kind of just to see where is this place at as far as the map is concerned? Like what is around it? This is a very rural place. It does not have a lot of stuff around it. It does have like one main road that has everything on it. I think it was called Second Avenue, but I might be wrong. It had everything. It had every restaurant you could think of. It had Walmart. It had Target. It had... um Everything that I felt like I needed was there on this street. And I was like, okay, okay. And it also had a lot of hotels. I decided to go and move forward and book this contract, y'all. So I agreed to this contract and we started to lay everything down. I booked my flight because I wasn't going to drive a thousand miles away. I know some of you, some travel nurses will drive to their destination, you know, take that two, three days to get there. But I decided not to do that. I decided I'm not the best on the road. I get motion sickness sometimes and I just hate driving. You know, I don't even want to go home at seven hours away. You know, sometimes I fly home. So I flew there and the flight, Lord, let me tell you guys, the flight was trivial because I couldn't just go there. It was such a small town. First of all, <clears throat> their airport was super small. And secondly, it was expensive to fly out of. 
So I actually, to get to this uh, city, I had to take three flights. I flew from, I was still in Washington, D.C., finishing contract. So I flew from Washington, D.C. to Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. From Chicago, Illinois to Denver, Colorado. From Denver, Colorado to Kearney, Nebraska. Please don't ask me why. I don't know. Apparently, flights do not fly out of that airport because it is so small. It's just like only certain flights. So I just had to take it wherever I could get. And even my flight going, leaving was canceled and it was pushed back. It was delayed a whole hour, two hours. So, you know, I just, it was a big old thing. When I, but when I finally got there, I was so glad to be there. Uh, from Colorado, from Denver, Colorado to Kearney, Nebraska, we took like a jet. There's no big plane. It was very small. It was probably 10 of us going there. That was a little suspect. When I saw that, I was like, hold up. Yeah, it was a little suspect. So, um, <laughs> needless to say, I had already booked a rental car. So they were at the airport and I picked up my rental car there. And I had this rental car for the, uh, my contract, by the way, I apologize. My contract was for nine weeks. So I rented the rental car for the entire nine weeks because the city was so small. They didn't really, they didn't have Uber. They didn't have Uber drivers. They had a local cab, but it wasn't a guarantee that they were going to be up at five, six o'clock in the morning to take me to work. So I decided to rent a car and, um, they gave me a great rate. I got, I paid $150 a week. So I was excited about that. I was like, yeah, sign me up. That's not a lot of money compared to what I was making. I could, you know, have enough money in my incidentals to pay for the rental car. So I picked up the rental car from the airport, went to the hotel. Now, initially when I was home looking for hotels, I didn't really see a lot. I did not know what to do as far as like, um, what was a good one? You know, I had no experience in the area. So I decided that I was going to go and go at Microtel. It was the only one where I actually got in touch with someone and it was like $45 a night. It was super cheap. And y'all, I promise it was the cutest little thing. It was the cutest little hotel room. They had like a separate living room area. They had like a counter and they had a refrigerator, but it was like your standard hotel refrigerator. Um, they had a microwave, a sink, and then your bathroom, and your sofa, your TV, and your bedroom. So I was okay with that. I was okay. And then I went and started working and people started talking about where they were staying and they were staying at Candlewood Suites. And this lady was like, you know, I, I, I like to stay in nice places, you know? And I said, well, I didn't even know about that place. Called there, they were 60 a night. But the catch was after you stayed there for 30 days, you were considered a resident of Nebraska and you got all your taxes back. So that was super helpful in my final cost. So I decided to stay there um, for the $60 a night. And um, Candlewood Suites was amazing. You had like a full-size kitchen. Um, you had a um, full-size refrigerator. You had um, a stove where you could cook food, or like a little griddle top thing. Um, you had double beds, so I got two beds. I got a big old bathroom. It was amazing. It was, it was definitely an upgrade for the extra $15 a night. Um, I do have a video uh, about my travel nursing. There's some videos. Um, if you look on my channel back towards January, February time, I have some travel nursing videos there. And that's the location where I was at. I show you the area. I show you the hotel. I show you even the room and how I prepare or do meal prepping. So if you're interested, I will leave that video for you guys down in the description bar. I'll also try to put some clips here in this video. But yeah, housing was great for me. 
I left the micro tail after two weeks and went over to Candlewood and I just stayed there for the remainder of my stay. Micro tail, you had to pay for the washer and dryer usage, but at Candlewood, the washer and dryer was free, honey. All you needed was your, your stuff to wash your clothes with. And I went right down there and washed my clothes. It was in the gym and it was, whoo, it was so convenient because already I'm paying $60 a night. I don't have to spend money on food. See, at the micro tail, I didn't have the stove. I couldn't prepare any meals. I had to actually eat out every day or buy microwavable food. Well, if I was eating out every day, I would be spending 10 to $15 a day on a meal. So I decided that the Candlewood Suites would be more um, financially better for me because now I can make my own meals. And then I'd be able to go to the grocery store, get groceries and save a little money. And that's exactly what I did. And I feel like it came, it was smarter for me to do it that way as opposed to going out to the restaurants like I was doing for the first two weeks. Everything was going well on the hospital floor. No, they did not. Everyone was excited that I was there. I never uh, felt like people didn't want me to be there or I was excluded. Um, they had just converted maybe a month to Epic. So I was a super user for Epic. So when I came in, they were like, oh, maybe you can help us learn some things. You know, so that was cool. After that, um, everybody was just so nice. Everybody, so everybody was very helpful there and very kind. Now I could say that I felt like I was the only African American person in the city, but I wasn't. I wasn't the only African American person in the city. Um, I would randomly run into other African Americans and they would be like shocked to see me. Like on the look on their face would be like, oh my God, where did she come from? Where is she doing? It would be so hilarious because that's out there in the Midwest. There's not a lot of African Americans in that area, but there are a few of them out there. I came there, I was, you know, very, very excited and you know i walked out there and it was nothing but field like prairie like farms like land farming and there was no big city there was no shopping <laughs> there was nothing and i was like oh my god where am i at like why did i come here oh my god i have to be here for nine weeks i literally was counting them weeks down I was counting those weeks down. I was so ready to go. Oh my gosh, I was so ready to go home. It was ridiculous. Almost like I could not really, I had no one to talk to outside of work. I could not make friends to hang out outside of work. It was crazy. But the people that I worked with on the hospital floor were so nice to me. You know, it snowed there. It was like right when we had that big blizzard and I had never experienced snow like that before. So it was an experience. Needless to say, they were very helpful in helping me to adjust to the snow. Now, one thing about going out to those hospitals, they do require you to still come to work. They do not care, honey. They want you at work. You gotta get there. Now, they did tell me once I got to work that if I had trouble getting to work, I could have called, they would have had to. They said they would have called and had the sheriff come and pick me up, but I was not aware of that. So I did not know that was an option or I would have contacted them, but nobody told me. So, oh my gosh, guys, that was hard for me to drive in the snow. I'm gonna insert a clip so you guys can see the trauma that I went through. <laughs> Trying to drive to work through this snow. It is hilarious. But nevertheless, I did get there. Leaving work one day, I did have a little miss up and kind of started to spin and slide. And I was like, oh my, trying to get control of the wheel, but I did safely. But that was very scary. That was scary time. Like, I don't want to do that again. They said that in the summer, they get up to 100 degrees. And that was very hard for me to believe because 
we were, the temperatures were in the negative when I was there. It was, it got as low as negative 25. You know what that feels like? That's like when you go outside and you breathe, but when you walk outside, you automatically freeze. You're automatically cold. You're automatically feeling frozen when you walk outside in negative 25. No need to, tr I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Every air that you talk is just like snow. <laughs> it was cold and I had never experienced anything like that before. Oh my gosh. I, uh, I keep telling all of my friends that I'm going to come back. They're telling me to come back in the summertime because it's warmer. And I can really experience the city. I feel like at the end of it all, I started to find little places that I was excited about, but I was more excited to get home. I really was. Now, even though I wasn't on a COVID contract, I was still a travel nurse. And one thing you gotta understand as a travel nurse, you're gonna float. You're gonna be the first to float. They're gonna float you before the regular staff, before whoever's up the float. If there's a travel nurse there that day, and then another floor needs a, a nurse, they're going to send that travel nurse. So I got floated probably about maybe five or six shifts. I say I got floated. And some of those shifts, I got floated to the COVID unit. And I would say I worked the COVID unit maybe three or four times. Yeah, I probably worked the COVID unit three or four times. And their COVID unit wasn't bad. It was a great experience. I won't say I enjoyed working on their COVID unit, but I enjoyed the way they had it managed. I enjoyed the way they had it managed. They had the hot zones where you could only go in those areas with your gear on. Um, and they, the hot zones was the med room, it was the supply room, it was the beverage area. So it was nice because when I left out of a COVID room, I didn't have to take my clothes off every time. The only time I had to take my clothes off is if I was coming out for a break. Like if I needed to use the bathroom or if I wanted to get something to drink or if I was done assessing my patients and I just wanted to get out of the hot zone, I could get out of the hot zone and I could take everything off, go wash, clean my hands, go to the bathroom, come back and sit at the main nurse's station with no protective gear on. Only thing I would have on was a mask. So we would do that. And um, it always had to be one person in the hot zone. And normally it was the, um, so they had some rooms were PCU, some rooms were ICU. So I took care of the PCU patients. And then there was a nurse that took care of the ICU patients. So they had to stay there for the vet. So they were always mandated to be in there, but not me because I was just a PCU nurse. So I was able to go out and I couldn't stay in and cover her patients because I was not an ICU nurse. So that was good and I enjoyed the way they managed it. So yeah, that was that. Now, the one thing that I missed the most about my trip at Kearney was the friendships. I have still friends. I don't talk to them all the time, but I do have, you know, added them all on Facebook. I have a few of their personal phone numbers and, you know, some of them are getting married. Some of them are in relationships, you know, and it's just cute to see how things started when I was there with one of the relationships and it's just blossomed. She actually is relocated and, you know, people are getting engaged and people are having babies and it's just a beautiful thing. And I'm just super excited for everybody. Some people have left and started traveling. Some people have moved on. So it's just super exciting, man, to see how people can evolve and elevate and go into different ways. So overall, I would say the biggest issue I had is I didn't like some of the charge nurses. I had like issues with some of them. I didn't like the way they managed things. I didn't like the way they talk to you one minute. They're nice and friendly and helpful. And then when it's time for you to, to float or something, they want to lay down the law. They don't know how to communicate with you. That kind of person. I don't like stuff like that. Like, 
Just tell me what it is and let's just be done with it. Just tell me what it is and let's just be done with it. You know, I came there to help and I feel like when you get floated, they automatically look for a negative response from you. But what they don't understand is that you were hired to help the hospital. So it doesn't matter, you know, you're here to help. Another thing is I don't like people messing with my time and my time was changed from the time I clocked in and stuff like that. So that was an issue for me because I, when I tried to get that fixed, I feel like that never really got fixed the way it should have. But I just let that go and I fixed them later on. I made it right for me. You have to be careful because they need you there to support them. They need you to help them because they're short staffed. You know, but you're only one person coming to help. You're only one person. So you got to understand that you can only help but so much. You can't pick up all of the slack, you know. And I felt like the getting the heaviest patients, we would get the heaviest patients, like all the total patients, you know. Um, some days they would give us a lighter load just to kind of make it seem like, oh, we can't keep giving her total patients all the time. Like... But I'm always jolly and happy to take care of my patients, regardless of which one it is. And nursing is 24 hours, so I'm going to do the best I can. And if I can't do it, then guess what? I just can't do it. And I'm not going to make myself upset or and angry about something that I can't change. You know, you can only do as much as you can do. So when this contract was over, what a wonderful moment it was for me. I actually got canceled the week, my last week. Yes. So let's say it was the Monday. It probably was three weeks before, three weeks before. And I found out I was going to be canceled the day before my contract was supposed to end or something random. It was something random because I felt like, okay, I need to cancel, you know? So I spoke to my uh, recruiter and I told her, hey, they canceled me or they're talking about canceling people. And I said, have you heard anything? And she looked into it and she said, oh yeah, you've been canceled on this day. So I got canceled on a date and it was like two days later was when my contract was actually supposed to end. So those two days later is when my shifts were. So that week that I was supposed to be canceled, let's say I was canceled on the third. I was supposed to work the fourth and the fifth. So I only had the first. So I would have only had one day that week and I would have had to pay for the hotel the whole week. You know, I was wasting money. Um, the whole week before I would have had to pay for the hotel. And I was like, to stay for one week, one day next week and not make my money back, I was like, oh no. So what I did was I um, asked, she told me to send a letter to the director or the floor nurse manager and see if I could um, stop at the end of the previous week, which is what they allowed me to and they canceled me that whole week instead of in the middle of the week which worked out really well for me because I was able to change my flight till that Saturday. So the week, I think I stopped working that Friday and I was able to change my flight to that Saturday. So I was able to get home and be home for that last week, which I took the loss of the last week, but, but regardless, I was canceled anyway. I would have only got paid for that one day that I worked. So, um, went home. Well, I booked my flight, got my flight changed. They charged me for that. My flight was already very expensive because I'm flying out of this small airport. So not only did I have to pay initially for this flight, but I went on ahead and did my um, pay the change fee. I had to change it. And it's okay because we do get reimbursed for that as a travel nurse, but golly. So um canceled my rental car for that last week and, you know, just went turned in my rental car and got on my plane. And now to get home, I had two flights. So I flew out of Kearney to Chicago and from Chicago to Washington, DC. So that was much better. That was much quicker for me. And I was so excited. I was so excited to really be out of there.
to, to be out of there. It was so many times, y'all, when I had like four days off in a row or something. I had a lot of days off. I wanted to come home so bad. But I knew that if I came all the way over here, something might go wrong and I might get stuck here. Or I might not want to go back. So I just decided to leave it alone, stay here, tough it out. You know, there's a lot of things I did in my spare time and I was grateful for that ability. Yeah, so my Kearney, Nebraska experience was a very good experience. It was the only contract that was that far away from home. I'm from South Carolina, so I've taken contracts in Virginia and Maryland and DC and Nebraska now. Um, and now I'm going back home to South Carolina. So I'm looking forward to in the future taking contracts in Georgia and in Florida. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about those experiences that are to come because I love travel nursing. I love the opportunities that present with it. And I love traveling to different areas seeing how people live. I love um, meeting new people and seeing how hospitals work. I'm telling you guys, if you, if you are a staff nurse and you do not like your job, you don't like your hospital, you don't like the way hospital politics are the same everywhere. No, <laughs> It's very seldom you're gonna find people that are happy in their environment. So I'm just letting you all know you can leave your hospital, but if you leave your hospital, make sure you're leaving for what you want. Don't just go to another place because it's gonna probably have the same problems you are already dealing with. Go for what you're looking for. What are you looking for in employment? Are you looking for more money? Are you looking for a location? Like make sure it works for you because when you decide to do it for the wrong reasons or you just, is you're not going to be happy. It's, it's everywhere. It's, okay, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for clicking into watch once again. I will leave down below in the description box those other videos about uh, when I was in Nebraska, the two that I think I was two that I filmed. I'll put those down below if you want to see more about that location. So yeah, if you guys are enjoying the Travel Nurse series, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can see more. There are lots more videos coming in this series. There's actually a total of seven more videos coming, seven more videos. So I hope you guys get really excited for that because I am super excited. I'm trying to do two to three videos a week and getting these up for you guys so that you can have the information that you need. I am thinking about doing like some nurse consulting. If anybody is interested in that or possibly being like a new nurse or a nurse mentor, um, a lot of people watch my videos and reach out to me on Instagram or by email. And it makes me very excited when you extend yourself to me and you ask me questions you know, I am a nurse just like you or just like what you want to become. And the only thing that I'm going to give you is information that I have already learned or information, resources, literature, materials that I have received along the way as I have been on this journey myself. And I really want to pour into some of you who are interested in doing the same. This is a very rewarding career. And it's a very rewarding service to provide to others. And if it's something that you're interested in, I would like to be the bridge for you. I would like to be the bridge to help you cross over from your insecurities, your fears, into this life of nursing. It's such a rewarding life when you're able to hold the hand of someone that has no faith and be able to let them know that they can do and be anything, that they can overcome their illness tomorrow through Christ. So this is just an amazing thing that we can do as a nurse. And I'm very interested in nurse mentoring and nurse consulting. And I'm interested in you know doing research and setting that up for you guys. So let me know how you guys feel about that down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.